Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I'm bringing you this video today from a place I've uh, come up before on my video making expeditions in Jerusalem. This place is called Mavina Park, but this place is actually in the news at the moment as the probable site of a future US embassy in Jerusalem. Now, even people who live in Jerusalem, I've been living here for seven years, probably if you told them, have you heard of Mavina Park, they would give you a blank look. It's known in Hebrew as uh, Machane Alambi, Alambi Camp, and I'll get to how that name came about just in a little bit here. It's this little box of land located between Der Hebron, which in English is Hebron Road, one of the main traffic thoroughfares running through Jerusalem. On this side where my hand is, we have Daniel Yanovsky Street and Tarim, which is a sort of urgent care facility. And then just up there on the left is Hanuk Albeg. So it's basically this little box and it's basically a wilderness and there's really not much to do here. As you can see, I'm sitting on a sort of makeshift campfire. There's bottles of Heineken. It's in pretty bad condition, which is a pity because it's a lovely park besides all the debris and the dirt. There's lovely, beautiful tall trees behind me. But this is, believe it or not, the site that has been earmarked for a future US embassy in Jerusalem. I've talked in past videos about how controversial the whole business of establishing embassies in Jerusalem and that the practice of most nations, unfortunately, has been to put their embassies in Israel literally anywhere except in Jerusalem. But this place has a pretty interesting history and I'm just, uh, I printed out the news coverage of this at the moment and uh, what's going on. So the main embassy building is going to be 10 meters high and they expect that construction, if this goes ahead, is going to take more than a decade. So I wanted to make this video today because it's going to be interesting to see if in 15 years into the future, if I'm still around, hope, hopefully I will be, uh, this will be a highly, highly secure, guarded US embassy facility. And it's just kind of hard to imagine looking around at this emptiness now that that's going to be the case. So what we've had now is we're coming into a 60, 60 day objection uh, period and the district planning and building committee is then if there's if the objections aren't um, don't sway the planning committee then it's the US is going to be given green light for construction now it's interesting because the US already has a couple of embassy and diplomatic buildings located in Jerusalem when the US moved their embassy to Jerusalem quite controversially a few years ago they put it in what was formerly a uh, consul building in uh, Talbiot Mizrach. And there's also in downtown on a grown street, there is a Palestinian affairs unit called the PAU. Now, a lot of people aren't sure what that is. It's now, it used to be a consulate general. I've talked in a previous video about how the consulates and consulate generals in Jerusalem are actually representations to the Palestinian Authority. And that was also the case for the US building. It was basically a self-administering representation to the PA. However, since the US embassy was moved to Jerusalem, it's now part of the embassy. So what's probably gonna happen is that that's going to continue serving as a sort of liaison service with the Palestinian Authority, the PA. The building in Talpiot Mizrach, I believe, is probably going to be continued as a consulate because when the embassy was moved there, I read in the news that you know it wasn't really ever intended to be an embassy in terms of the level of security needed for a US embassy. But this place has been actually earmarked for a very, very long time. One more interesting detail before I wrap up this video. In the last days of the Reagan presidency, January 18th, 1989, just literally less than a month before I was born, US ambassador to Israel, William Brown and Israel's land authority, Israel, Israel Lands Authority Deputy Director, Moshe Gatz signed an agreement according to which a plot of land in Jerusalem, this is from the Times of Israel, would be leased from Israel to the US for 99 years for the sum, the token sum of $1 per year. The 15 page land lease and purchase agreement referred only to the Jerusalem property, but almost immediately reports surfaced later confirmed the land in question was located in what was known as the Allenby Barracks, the site of the British Army's Jerusalem garrison during the Mandate period. Palestinian scholar Walid Khalidi wrote in a 2000 article for the Journal of Palestine Studies. So this place, not a lot of people are aware of the history and that's why it's called the Allenby Compound, that during the British Mandate period there was actually, you can see some historical aerial photos, incredible. Talpiot, located just off that way, 
hadn't even been built yet and you can literally see the tents of the British Army were based literally where I'm sitting in what is now a wilderness. So this little inconspicuous park, Mavina Park, today located wedged between Dera Chavron and Yanovsky is, if all plans go to uh, come to fruition, will be a US Embassy building in probably a little bit over a decade.